Hi, I want to show you an example of how I can use a position versus time graph to create a motion map. Because one of the most important things that we can do in building an understanding of any one of our models in physics is to think through how I can translate from the information of one representation of that model to a different representation of that model. When I made the video with uh, our first motion map, I was translating from a verbal description to a motion map. Right now, I wanna translate from a graph of position versus time to a motion map. So by the way, I do wanna point out, I'm using an X for representing position. Um, when we measure position, we use X's in physics. Um, well, we use X's for position on a horizontal axis, we use y's for position on a vertical axis. And so that x, y, horizontal is x position, x is horizontal position, sorry, y is vertical position, that matches up with the way that you are accustomed to thinking about x and y axes in, say, math class. Um, and this is also why I don't like to talk about x axis, y axis when I'm talking physics talk. Um, when I'm talking physics talk, if I'm doing a position versus time graph, I don't have an x-axis down here. I have a time axis, a t-axis. Um, then my, I have a position axis vertically. And if we're not careful about thinking about math language versus physics language, we can confuse ourselves by talking about x, because x in physics means position, which is on the vertical axis, which is completely different from the math language. Anyway. I want to build a motion map from this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a time of t equals zero, where was this moving object? Now I don't have any words to say what this object is, so maybe I'll dream up uh, that it was uh, an orangutan uh, walking around in my backyard. So there's an orangutan walking around in my backyard, and it starts at a time of zero seconds at a position of nine meters, which I'm just reading off of the graph. Right here, when t equals zero, x equals nine meters. So that's the starting, the initial position of the orangutan. So I'm just gonna put a dot for the orangutan. I'm, I'm not gonna worry about like swinging arms and legs. I'm just gonna think about like the orangutan's body as a whole moving that way. So at a time of zero seconds, it was at nine meters. So now I can just go to, okay, at a time of one second, where was the orangutan that was at seven meters? So I'll put my next dot at seven meters. At two seconds, five meters. So my third dot is a time of two seconds because my times, let's remember, I have zero seconds here I have one second there. I'm going to use the S for seconds so we don't get confused. I have a time of two seconds there. And so let's see, at three seconds, the orangutan is at a position of three meters. So there. Now at a time of four seconds, oh, the orangutan is still at a position of three meters. At five seconds, the orangutan is still at a position of three meters. Oh, if I've got a flat line here, a horizontal line, then that's showing that from three seconds all the way until six seconds, the orangutan was staying at a position of three meters. So this flat line is showing that the orangutan was not moving at all. Now, if I try to draw, so I've got three seconds, four seconds. If I just put this dot right on top, then we're going to lose track. So four seconds, five seconds, this is going to be really confusing. So instead of just putting a bunch of dots on top of each other, I'm just going to shift it upward so I can see it. So three seconds, and so this is showing that I'm not moving at all left to right on left or right on my number line. 
So let's see, I want to keep track of my dots correctly. So this is really where it comes in handy to start labeling these things. So I've got three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. I'm going to make a six second while I've got it. So three seconds is this dot, four seconds is the next dot, five seconds, the orangutan is just standing still. And at six seconds, the orangutan is still at three meters. Lazy orangutan. Now at seven seconds, ah, we've moved to four meters. At seven seconds. At eight seconds, we'll be at five meters. So here's the five. Not four, so that, that was a little too far. So at eight seconds, we're at five meters. At nine seconds, we're at six meters. And at 10 seconds, we are back to seven meters. And to be thorough, then we would add seven, like a seven second label here, eight second label here, nine second label here, 10 second label here. Now I also then want to add these arrows onto my uh, motion map. Now we can see that um, from six seconds, this segment of the graph from six seconds to 10 seconds, the orangutan was slower than it was in the first three seconds. We can also see that with the absolute value of the slope at the end of the graph is a lower, a less steep slope than the steepness of the graph at the beginning. So we can also see this on our motion map where the dots are further apart. The further apart the dots are, then the larger distance that it travels, the larger the displacement, if you know your vocabulary, um, the larger the displacement from one moment to a second later. And so we've got to have a larger velocity for the first three seconds and a lower velocity at the end. And so I'm going to draw some equal length arrows and I'm going to put those little hash marks on my arrows to show which ones are equal to each other. So I'm going to draw those on by hand. So at zero seconds, the orangutan is already moving. Now, what about an arrow at three seconds? Right here at three seconds, um, like at 2.9999 seconds, the orangutan was moving, and at 3.00001 seconds, the orangutan had stopped. Um, I'm not gonna draw an arrow at three seconds because between three and four seconds, the orangutan didn't go anywhere. So I don't want to confuse myself by drawing an arrow here at the three seconds because between the three and the four, nothing happened. So what I need to draw, since my arrows are a length that matches up with how fast, then I need to show a zero length arrow, which is basically just not drawing an arrow. So I'm not going to draw an arrow at three seconds. At four seconds, I'm still not drawing an arrow. At five seconds, I'm still not drawing an arrow. Now at six seconds, if we really wanted to, we could argue about, is it moving at six seconds or not? At 5.9999 seconds, no, it's not moving yet. At 6.00001 seconds, okay, now it's moving. But I'm just gonna look at this for now as between six and seven seconds, it is moving. So I'm gonna draw a little arrow here and that arrow is going to be shorter than my earlier arrows. And then at seven seconds and onward, it's still moving at that same slow speed. And this is so tiny. I'm just drawing two hash marks on here, but it's so small you can't even really see what it is that I'm drawing there. And then at 10 seconds, hmm, should I draw an arrow here at 10 seconds or not? Um, that's something that uh, reasonable people could argue about. Um, and it's not the most important thing to me right now, because somebody could argue 
that at 10 seconds, we don't know that the orangutan has stopped. And somebody could also argue that at 10 seconds, well, we just don't know anything about its motion. So we shouldn't make a claim about what the orangutan was doing because we stopped measuring at 10 seconds. We didn't continue measuring. So we just don't know. And I'm just gonna leave that dot empty. I'm not gonna draw anything. So here I have used the information on a position versus time graph to create the information for a motion map. So that's that, hope that was helpful.